G'day ladies and gents, welcome to War Thunder with Mags, and time for an update on my marked simulation event test. Some of you may have seen this already on my social media, sorry it's taken so long again, but life has been chewing up my free time quite a bit. So, this Saturday night at 11pm my time, that's GMT plus 11, or Saturday the 14th, 11pm GMT plus 11, I'll be accepting invites for the first round of Mark Simulation testing. Now, as I mentioned in the past, my Patreon supporters will have first right of refusal in this event, after which I'll be accepting subscriber invites. Now, this doesn't mean that there's only going to be limited slots. Uh, Patreons are guaranteed a flyout as a thank you for their direct support of my channel. However, all players and testers involved in this event will be rotated during the course of the event. Now, there are 32 player slots available. I will be taking one. Grievous will be taking another as he will be live streaming the event. That means 30 slots will be available and will be rotated probably every two to three matches. So, before we get on to how to sign up for the event, let's go over the rules. Now, rule number one, this is a Mark simulation event, so game mode will be set to realistic, so markers will be active on play player aircraft. However, controls will be limited to joystick and virtual joystick only. At this time, I'm pretty sure I can restrict this in the actual match setup itself. However, if I find that there is a way for people to get around it and get mouse aim in, I can find out if you are using mouse aim during the course of the events, and it is very important that you don't. This whole game mode relies entirely on you using the V-Joy or the joystick. Now, if I suspect somebody is using mouse aim and has found a way around the system, I can find out whether or not you are simply by asking you to fly in a straight line inverted. The instructor in mouse aim will always try and rewrite your aircraft. If you cannot fly in a straight line inverted, you will be ejected from the match and you will be in de denied future participation in any future tests that are done. Rule number two, all aircraft views will be restricted to cockpits only. Now again, this is something I think I can restrict within the settings for the custom battle. However, if there is a way around it, this is one that I can't prove, but it is very important that you do it anyway if there is a way around it. As you can see in the background here, I'm playing a match in the F9F5 Panther using the settings that I will be using during the test. The map we are playing on is actually designed for reserve aircraft in realistic battles. This map feels a hell of a lot larger when you're flying from cockpit, and in fact, in fact the entire feeling for how this game mode is going to work is based around the cockpit as well. So once again, as with the joystick controls, if you find a way around this, don't use it. It spoils the entire purpose of the event going into third person. Now one extra thing to add on to that, uh, this does mean that any aircraft that do not currently have cockpits modelled in the game will be disqualified from the test. So. I know everyone loves flying out the bow fighters every now and again, they are not allowed. They do not have a cockpit, they cannot participate in this event, and they will not be allowed to. Everyone has been informed, and everyone will be reminded during the course of the event, if you proceed to bring out an aircraft that does not have a cockpit anyway, again, ejected from the match and denied future access to the event. Rule 3, map and team layout. Now, maps will be randomly selected between air-spawned arcade battle maps and realistic maps with ground starts. I will be selecting all of the maps myself. Now, all teams will be nation versus nation. That means all cross-nation premium aircraft will be disqualified. So, as an example, if we were to run an Era 4 test of the event, the P-51D-20NA would be allowed, the 190 and the Spitfire are not. I may make special allowances for particular aircraft, such as the Mustang Mark 1A, as this was a British variant that was not used by US forces, so that may be allowed. I may also allow some of the Era Cobra and King Cobra setups to come in as well, as well, the Russians use more of those than the Americans ever did. But other than that, there will be no British, uh, no German Typhoons, no German P-47s. You fly your nation's aircraft, or aircraft that they used in service numbers. Rule number four. Now, I will be deciding the maximum BR levels for any aircraft that you bring out within the event. I will be setting the limits. You will not be allowed to deploy aircraft that are above the BR limit that I set at the start of the match. However, if you choose to set an air use any aircraft that is below that BR level, that is perfectly fine. Providing, of course, it has a cockpit and it's not a cross-nation premium. Now, for the moment, I'm not planning to take this test above Era 3 aircraft, as it's the, uh, the number that the majority of players that are involved should have access to an Era 3 aircraft somewhere, so we can fit everyone into the event. However, if I run into a situation where all players have an Era 4 aircraft unlocked, or an, even an Era 5 aircraft unlocked, and there's enough interest, we may run a Era 4 prop battle, or an Era 5 jet battle. But again, this will be discussed during the event, depending on what's going on. In the end, I have veto control. This is my test. I'm trying to put together something for Gaijin here. 
my rules. Rule number five, and this is an important one, I don't want to type during this event. So all players must have TeamSpeak installed on and be able to access the TeamSpeak server. Now my patrons will get access to the TeamSpeak server about an hour before the event starts, as they have an hour time to get themselves organized to get into the event. As players are invited to the event itself, you will be messaged in-game directly the TeamSpeak details and the password in order to get on. The TeamSpeak server has a limited number of slots, so if you are not involved in a battle, if you're time has just finished and you've been rotated out of a battle, I would ask that you please immediately leave the TeamSpeak server to open up spaces for new players coming in. If you are re-invited back in, you'll of course be allowed to rejoin. Now I understand this is going to cause a slight problem for PlayStation players, I understand that, don't worry guys, you will get your time in the sun. My second test, this is just the first of three that I'm going to be doing. The second test I'm actually looking for a large number of PlayStation players to get involved in, and I'll use whatever communication methods are most appropriate to work with them, even if it means using the in-game comms, because I really need the PlayStation players to do a test on their own to find out whether or not this event is going to work for their controls, whether or not it will work on controllers, whether or not the PlayStation 4 head tracking is going to be good enough to make this uh, something that can be done easily. And last but not least, rule number six. Don't be too competitive. There are no points for first place in this battle. This, this is just a test event. What I want to know is whether or not this event will work from a technical standpoint, and if players find it fun to play, whether or not it's something they would enjoy, whether or not you guys would actually like to see this being run as a event that you could join into, much like the Absolute Simulation events that Gaijin has been running recently. I just want everyone to have a good time, have a bit of fun. If somebody happens to win, I don't really care at this point. We're not getting credits for any of this. We're not unlocking any RP. This is just to have a good time and to see whether or not this simulation or this marked simulation event is actually something that is going to be interesting to a large number of the player base. So nobody go aggro if you get shot down. Just chill, have a laugh, have some fun, probably crash your plane off, and I know I probably will, and we'll see how this all works out. So... That's it. Uh, this will be the first test of three. As I mentioned before, you have a little over uh, about 36 hours at the time this video goes live to practice on your V-Joy or joystick skills. Um, yeah, announcements for Patreons to join will go up on the Patreon website with the TeamSpeak details. Once the Patreon timer is up, I will be putting announcements up on my Facebook, my Twitter, on my Steam group, my Gmail, and I will be making announcements in the Twitch stream if it is running at that point in time with a code to message me. All players at that point will be selected randomly to fill the remaining slots. Every couple of matches I will be rotating the entire player base that is involved in the test. So there will be 30 slots opening up every two to three battles maximum. Now when I send out the invite codes across social media, I will also be sending out a link to Grievous' livestream if you don't already have it. I encourage everyone to jump along and actually check out what's going on and see what's flying from his perspective, listen in to what we're discussing. It's worth being there anyway, as I said before, invite codes on each set of player rotations will also be linked in the Twitch livestream as well as across all my social media. So, that's it. That's uh, how the event is going to run. As I said before, you by the time this video goes live, you should have a little under 36 hours available. Good luck, and I'll catch you in the skies.